Hey folks, I'm Carlton Kirsch from Dayton Nursery. Thanks for joining me for another installment of our 2021 virtual seminar series. I am the greenhouse production manager and I also manage our biological control program, which I would like to talk a little bit more about today. We grow under controlled environmental conditions. We control those conditions to make an ideal environment to grow plants in. This ideal environment for the plants is also very ideal for some insect and disease pathogens to go rampant through the greenhouse if left unchecked. In the past, we've used chemical controls to take care of these pathogens. Every time we would use a chemical though, you don't get 100% kill. And the insects that survive pass that resistance on to their offspring. So what do we do about that? We have adopted a, a policy of using biological controls. These are good bugs that go after the bad bugs. So what are the bad bugs? Let's talk about a few that are a major problem. Number one would be thrip. Thrip are very small insects. What they do is they use their mouth parts to suck the juices out of plants, causing decline in the flowers and also in the leaves. Another one is the European two-spotted spider mite. They reproduce very quickly, especially in warmer temperatures. They also suck the juices out of the leaves and colonize uh, very fine webs over the plants. Another insect that we have problems with are aphids. Aphids reproduce very, very quickly and their numbers can build seemingly overnight. They have piercing mouth parts that suck the juices out of the leaves and they cause distorted growth, lack of vigor, and a decline in the plant. Their excrement uh, is very uh, sweet, it's high in sugar content and a sooty mold, it looks like a black sooty mold grows on that and they become very unsightly. Sometimes people will notice the black mold and then realize that they have an insect problem. Another problem that we have are white fly. White fly really don't go after too many of the plants that we grow during the summer months, some of the tropicals, but they're a major concern on our poinsettia production that we grow every year, starting in the late fall into the winter for the Christmas and holiday season. White fly are notoriously hard to control with chemical means because they have adapted resistance over time to these chemicals. So what do we do about this resistance and, and how do we manage these insects that become a problem in our greenhouse? Well we have adopted a, con a biological control program. I deal closely with the Copert Biological Services just up in Michigan. They supply us with good bugs. These bugs seek out and destroy and eat the bad bugs. Let's talk a little bit about some of these controls. First control is called Thripex. Thripex is a predatory mite. These are good mites that go after the bad mites. They go after the European two-spotted spider mite and they also go after Thrip. These predatory mites are amazing. They never sleep. They're always out looking for new prey. They're always out on the hunt. And they work very well. The bad bugs can never form a resistance to these good bugs. They're our best friend. Another control that we have is the aphipar. The, that control is for the aphids. They are parasitic wasps. I know what you're thinking when you think of a wasp, but these are not wasps that can sting humans. They're very small. They're about the size of a gnat or even smaller. And what the females do, they can sniff out an aphid from very far away and they'll fly right up to it and they will inject an egg into the aphid. That egg will hatch and eventually consume the aphid from within. And then a new adult will hatch out of the aphid and the life cycle will start all over. It's like science fiction. It's really great when you see it in the greenhouse under the magnifying glass. It's really spectacular. 
for white fly control, we use a product called Entermix. Entermix is a mix of two different parasitic wasps. They seek out the nymph stage of the white fly. They also inject an egg into the nymph, stopping it from developing. Another control that I use is something called sticky cards. These cards are a special color of yellow that the insects find very attractive. The cards are, are made of a heavy duty plastic material and are covered in a very sticky glue. These cards serve several purposes. The first purpose is to monitor the insect levels and what species of insects I have in the greenhouse. They can also be used in higher numbers of cards to trap insects. They're very good to control adult white flies. They'll fly into the card and get trapped. And once the adult is trapped, it cannot lay any more eggs. Bugs are not the only things we control safely and organically. Diseases such as botrytis, gray mold, and powdery mildew can wreak havoc on plants, especially in the greenhouse. Believe it or not, we use something as simple as the ice melter you buy for your walkways and driveway in the winter. We use calcium chloride, and what it does when we spray it on the plants, it helps to strengthen the cell walls so that the fungus cannot penetrate deep into the cell and consume it. The advantage of calcium chloride is it's 100% organic, safe to use on the plants, safe for the environment, and safe for the employees and customers. With this half tablespoon measure, I add five scoops into the sprayer and then we reseal the bucket to keep the product dry. The brand we use is Dow Flake. Tetra Flake is a similar brand and can be used interchangeably. The sprayer is then filled with water. Luckily this product dissolves quickly so there is no need to shake or mix before pumping the sprayer for first use. Just remember to use a separate sprayer. Keep one on hand for fungicides, one for insecticides, and one for weed killers. Be sure to label them accordingly. We spray this solution twice per week on susceptible plants. Today we are spraying cone flowers and bee balm, being sure to thoroughly soak the crown of the plant. The greenhouse is currently just 35 degrees. At home, you too can use calcium chloride to control powdery mildew on susceptible plants such as squash, cucumbers, and lilacs. It is perfect for edible crops, plus it is very inexpensive to use. We would like to thank Dr. Utra Samarakun from OARDC in Worcester for her research allowing us to effectively control diseases in the greenhouse, organically and safely. Using these biological and organic controls on our plants enables us to grow a high quality plant for you, our customers, that is safe for the employees, safe for you, the customers, and safe for our environment. I hope you learned something today about some of the things that I do in the greenhouse, helping to grow good quality plants for you. Thanks for joining me for this installment of the 2021 virtual seminar series. We hope to see you all at the nursery this year, and hopefully we can have these seminars in person next winter. Thank you, take care.